But today, instead of looking at the end of her life, we're here to remember her life. Amen. And the things that she gave everyone who knew her, not just her family, but the community in general. Family and friends come together to remember Rachel Morin, a mother of five who was murdered on a running trail in Maryland as the search for the man who killed her enters its third week. Thanks for joining us here on Law & Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. Rachel Morin's murder has shaken the small town where she lived in Bel Air, Maryland. Morin went for a walk on the Ma and Paw Trail in the early evening on August 5th and never returned home. The next day, deputies found her body off of the trail. Then the search for her killer began. The Harford County Sheriff's Office stepped up patrols, even buying a new vehicle to patrol the trail. Last week, a big break in the case came after sheriff's officials said DNA found at the crime scene where she was murdered came back as matching DNA from a home invasion and assault of a young girl in Los Angeles back in March. Based on the DNA evidence, we consider the individual in the video we obtained from the Los Angeles Police Department and that we are about to show you on our TV screens to be the person that murdered Rachel Morin on August 5th. Based on our analysis of, of this video and witness observations, we believe the suspect to be approximately five foot nine, 160 pounds, and of Hispanic descent. We want to make it clear that we believe the suspect acted alone and he doesn't represent the entire Hispanic community of Harford County who we are now partnering with to identify this suspect. There's no word right now on whether police have made progress on identifying the man in the video. Over the weekend, retired NYPD Sergeant Joe Jackalone went to the Ma and Pa Trail to see what it was like. Is the trail open or no? Can we go down there or no? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Jackalone found law enforcement on the trail. He walked down the path and came to a place where a makeshift memorial had been set up. It's like a younger picture of them. Another pair of rosary beads. Jackalone also found exit points for the trail. There's a deep ridge here. You can see the houses right there. Then on his way out, Jackalone came upon a vigil for Rachel Morin. Hundreds of people gathered to celebrate her life. She was just 37 years old and a mother of five children. A couple of people spoke at the vigil. And the fact that this place was a area where she gained strength, joy, and solitude, and oftentimes serenity. In a very busy life, she came to the trail and she got in touch with nature and recognized the gifts that she had, particularly her physical fitness and her ability not only to walk, but to run. Joe, tell me what you found when you went to the Ma and Pa Trail over the weekend. It was kind of surprising. I decided to take a ride down there to see what was going on for the trail for myself. And uh, unbeknownst to me, there was a ceremony that was supposed to take place within about 10 minutes when I got there for Rachel. And, you know, when I looked around, the crowd started building up pretty quickly. If I had an estimate, I'd probably say about 250, 300 people showed up for this event. But beforehand, I was able to walk the trail. Um, I walked about a half a mile into it and just to look for, you know, places where if I was a su suspect, where would I escape from? And, you know, I found a couple of places where, and there was one service road. There's like a, an antenna, like a cell tower, cell tower that had a path through the woods, led right out to a street and gone. So if he had a vehicle or something like that, that would have been an ideal opportunity for him to escape. Did you see the actual crime scene? Were you able to find where you believe this happened? I mean, you know, leftover crime scene tape, anything like that? Yeah, it was. it's very difficult to try to find the exact spot. And there was a number of law enforcement officers there. I wouldn't ask them. And, you know, it comes to a point now where it really doesn't matter, per se, exactly where this crime happened. I was probably there or walked by it or at, at the very least. But you know what? You're dealing with a. I was looking for, like, say, you know, maybe a, a trample in the woods where they had to bring a stretcher down or law enforcement keep on going through. It was a heavily brushed area in many places. So, and there was a lot of culverts. Just try to imagine from the investigative standpoint, that's basically what I was doing and, and just, you know, overseeing this and saying, how could this happen? I'll tell you, when I was walking the trail, I didn't see a lot of people. So, if you're, you know, you're walking 
you have to be mindful of this, right? So I know the the AirPods or and all the other things, the distractions. It's always a bad thing, and I, I encourage people to keep because they're noise canceling, right? So you can't even hear anything when you're when you have them on. And there's a there would let's put it this way: there was plenty of opportunity if somebody was going by that someone could jump out of the woods, uh, grab them, and drag them into the woods, and nobody would have ever seen it. It's pretty remote in certain areas, but in other areas you can see houses right from the trail. So that's why I said there was only a couple of opportunities or a couple of locations that someone could hide out and go undetected. So it's pretty secluded. Um, ideal location if you're a criminal looking to prey on people, unfortunately. Um, but you happen upon this vigil for Rachel and her killer is still on the loose. They released the surveillance video last week uh, that we still don't have a suspect identified or in custody that we know of. Maybe the cops have identified him and they're just keeping it quiet to track him down. Joe described what he saw at the vigil along with the mood there. But uh, there were family members there. I, I believe even the boyfriend was there too. Uh, I didn't engage anybody or talk to him because this is a private time. And I think everybody was pretty much, uh, you know, cognizant of that too. So nobody really, you know, was approaching them per se other than the family members. They had uh, the pastor there who, who you know, who did some, uh, you know, prayers and, and talked about Rachel. And there was another gentleman there, too, that talked about Rachel. But it was uh, all done respectfully. It was all done uh, from an outpouring of community support and uh, tons of flowers and people there. And it was uh, it was just nice to see the community come together. And, and I believe for the family, it's part of the healing process. Uh, they won't feel totally you know, whole again, I think, until this person is caught and brought to justice. But I, I think it's a good first start. And it was, um, you know, I've never really experienced that per se, you know, from a law enforcement perspective, you're kind of there doing security when you when these things were going on. But for being a bystander in this, it, it was it was pretty it was somber, but it was pretty powerful. At the end of the vigil, the crowd walked down the trail, many people carrying flowers for Rachel Morin. How difficult is it going to be to track this perpetrator down. We have video, thank goodness. However, we have a, a kind of a side shot of the face barely and then a shot of the back. Well, considering he traveled from, you know, Los Angeles, California, all the way to Maryland, right? So this guy either has a network of family or friends that he's going through to try to get to this location. He has a vehicle or he's obtaining vehicles. But there was one thing that I spotted in the video that I had actually posted on the Twitter feed. I said, you know, can somebody like, yeah, you know, kind of corroborate what I see here. When he's leaving the house, he has, he's putting his phone, it looks like in his pocket and the phone remains on. You can see it glowing the entire time as he's leaving. So from the law enforcement perspective, I think you're going to see the feds get involved in this because you have now crimes that are now in different states. And I think the U.S. Marshal Service uh, is out there hunting for this guy. And through the, you know, the geofencing and through the triangulation, maybe that cell phone can play a vital role, right? We, we see how Cell phone records, internet records, and surveillance video plays a role in just about every case. So far, we have two of those in this case. So for investigators, they have a lot to go on, and I think they will capture him, you know, within due time. I reached out to the Harford County Sheriff's Office to see if there had been a suspect identified yet from that video. I was only told that nothing else has been released since Thursday of last week. Harford County has set up a special email tip address. Anyone with information about Rachel Morin's murder or the man in the video can email rmtips at harfordsheriff.org or call 410-836-7788. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.